All right, IBSL2. Uh, today we're going to talk about 5.1, which is all about limits. So last class, uh, we linked to a little video just talking about uh, limit notation. I believe Nancy Pye was walking you guys through like uh, what a limit even is. Um, today I'd like to start with limit notation. So um, the limit of a function exists only if these two things are true. Now you might look at both those things and be like, I have no idea what's going on there. That seems like a whole other language. Well, first of all, it is another language, but um, what this right here is saying, um, limit as X approaches A from the right. That's what that positive thing means. So um, that's like if you were to start on the right-hand side of the graph and then move left towards the value of A, A being like a, a vertical X value, um, how would the graph behave? the graph being f of x. So limit as x approaches a from the right-hand side of f of x, um, if that equals some number, and now remember this L is a y value. So if the graph approaches some y value from the right and also from the left, so once again, this little negative here means uh, approaching the graph towards A from the left-hand side. Um, if that also equals L, if they both equal the same thing, then you can kind of get rid of that from the right and from the left thing and just say this. When you write just this A all on its own, no positive up there or no negative up there, that means uh, approaching from both sides. So a limit exists if from the left-hand side and right-hand side, it's approaching the same Y value. Remember that this L is a y value on the graph. Let's look at an example. So um, first of all, we're going to use GDC. Uh, if you don't want, know what GDC stands for, that's Graphics Display Calculator, aka your TI, your Casio, your Desmos, however you want to approach this. Uh, we're going to sketch x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. Now notice that they say x does not equal 3. That might seem kind of weird, like, huh, I wonder why they picked that random value for the graph to not equal. But it's actually not so random because, remember, there's a big, big rule in math that you can never, ever, ever divide by 0. Please notice that if you were to take a 3 and plug it in to both these spots... Like in the top, it's totally cool. You would just get uh, like a zero in the top. But if you put a three uh, right here, whoops, that's not a highlighter, Jolly. Um, if you put a three right here, you, in the denominator, you're gonna get three minus three and that equals zero. And then all math breaks down, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, so anytime, like you can never ever divide by zero. So that's why they're telling us that there. Now, if you were to graph this on your calculator, it might seem kind of strange because it looks like a linear equation, and it is a linear equation. It looks something like this. Now, because they say x does not equal 3, that means that there's going to be a hole in this graph at x is equal to 3. So if I go over to like, you know, 1, 2, 3 right here and trace it up to the graph, that means that we should actually put a little hole in this graph. So I'm going to put a circle. Uh, actually, I guess, yeah. Um, know that the inside of that circle shouldn't be filled in, but I don't want to erase that whole line. But yeah, there is a hole there at x equals 3. Now, why did it become linear? Uh, the book doesn't really focus on this, but I think it's all about zooming in on, don't erase, uh, this guy right here. You can see algebraically why it became linear. So... The top is factorable. That's a classic difference of squares. That's x minus 3 and x plus 3 all over x minus 3. Now, do you notice anything in the top and the bottom that can cancel out? 
yeah, there's an X minus three on the top and the bottom. So those go away. So this is really Y equals X minus three, which means that it's, uh, it's, it's linear essentially. Is that the wrong graph? Um, so that's why it looks like a line. Now, this question right here is what is the limit as x approaches 3 of that function? So the function is still x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. We want to know what's happening at 3. Now, sometimes with limits, you can actually just replace the x with the thing you're looking at. Like you could put a 3 in there and it would kind of tell you what's happening at the function at that point. The problem with that, with this particular equation and function, is if you put a three in there, you get a goose egg, a zero in the denominator. So it doesn't really work. It doesn't exist at three, which we already knew from up here. They tell us it doesn't exist at three. <coughs> um, if you're using a graphing calculator or Desmos, you could zoom in on this point and then like see what what values are happening as you get closer and closer and closer from this side and closer and closer and closer from this side i'm going to kind of approach that uh i guess numerically i guess is the way to say it or i'm going to look at two situations one where i replace x with a number that's really really close to three from the left hand side and another one where it's really really close to three from the right hand side so So from the left, a number that's really close to 3 from the left would be like 2.99. So I'm going to put 2.99 in for both the x's. Crunch that up on my calculator, and I believe this is 5.99. Now let's do the same thing, but from the right. So um, from the right would be something that's a little bit past three. So sticking with my two decimal points type of thing, I'm gonna put in a, a 3.01. Now if I crunch that out, um, I'm guessing that it's gonna be something kind of close to 5.99. So 3.01. Yeah, it's 6.01. So please notice that both these numbers are getting are pretty close to 6. In fact, if you went out to more decimal places like 2.99999 and 3.00001 and you crunch both of those, I imagine that both of those would be even closer to 6. So I'm going to say because from the left it was approaching six and from the right it was approaching six, that the entire limit as x goes to three of x squared minus nine all over x minus three, that this equals six. Well, that didn't work very well. Maybe I won't box my answer. Okay, fine. <laughs> Um, you could also check that this makes sense graphically. And I think if you were to zoom in on this place right here, that uh, these points right here, would, the Y values would be getting closer and closer to six. But remember at that point, it doesn't technically exist. Three comma six is not on the graph because when you plug in an X of three into the original, you get a, uh, a zero in the denominator. So it doesn't work. So the entire limit equals six. Next up, we're gonna sketch this. Once again, if it says to sketch something, I'm fine with you doing any sort of uh, you know, graphing calculator or Desmos right now. And then they tell us this funny thing again, x equals zero. Can you guys see why x can't equal zero? It's all about this guy right here. Dun, dun, dun. If you put a zero in the denominator, you are certainly dividing by zero. So using technology, uh, you can see that this graph looks like your classic Superman graph. Remember that Superman is like an exponential graph. It starts out real low to the, uh, the runway, the x-axis, and then it takes off once it crosses the y-axis. 
Now remember, there is a hole in this graph because they say x cannot equal zero, so I should technically put a little open circle here. Now, for part b, we're going to find the limit as x approaches zero of the function 3 to the x minus 1 all over x. Once again, I can't just plug in zero and like get at it right away because the zero in the denominator, I can't divide by zero, so that doesn't work. But the whole thing about limits, remember, they're about all about like squeezing from the left and the right. So if you look at this graphically, if we were to you know approach really really close to this point from the x, uh, you know, from the left hand side with x's, and then from the right hand side with x's, like what would it be approaching? I think I'm going to take a numerical approach. Well, it says numerically, but um, I'm just going to check from the left and from the right again. So I guess I could I can use the notation and say x as x approaches 0 from the left-hand side of 3 to the x minus 1 all over x. So remember, this is from, from left. And then we'll do a from right as well. So um, as we're approaching zero from the left, zero from the left would be something like um, really close to zero, but like from the negative side. So like, you know, negative 0.001 or negative 0.01 or something like that. So I'm just going to check what three to the negative uh, 0.01 minus one all over 0.01 would be, and then I'm also going to check from the right. So that would be something really close to zero, but on the positive side. So three to the like 0.01 uh, minus one, all over 0.01 as well. So if I punch uh, both of these in, three to the negative 0.01, subtract one, divide by point negative 0.01. Oh, I forgot to put a negative in the bottom. I get 1.09. I'll use the approximation symbol because it wasn't perfectly 1.09. And then if I do 3 to the power of 0.01 minus 1, oh, drop it down, um, and then divide that by 0.01, I get 1.104. It's a little bit past. I'm going to do a few more decimal points just to illustrate that it is past that. So it's 1.104. Notice that these two values are pretty close to the same number. Um, <coughs> excuse me, this side is a little bit under 1.1, and this one is a little bit over 1.1. So I'm inclined to say the limit as x approaches 0 of 3 to the x minus 1 all over x is 1.1. Nope, not going to do the box. All right. Last thing I have to show you guys, uh, we need to talk about horizontal asymptotes. So let's start with this function, f of x equals 1 over x squared. This is your classic volcano function. Um, it's kind of like the cobwebs, the uh, rational function, all that, but one of the cobwebs has been flipped up into the positive axis, or above the x-axis. Um, please notice as x goes, as x gets really, really big, um, that this graph approaches something. So if I go really far out on this side, like I go out to all the way to positive infinity, so this is like as x approaches, I think that's the notation they use, positive infinity. Yeah, sorry. Oh no, sorry. That would be infinity from the right-hand side. Ignore that. So as x goes to infinity, um, that the graph gets really, really close to zero. In fact, if I was to continue this, it would just get closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. As x goes to 
negative infinity, the same thing happens on this side, that this tail right here is going to continue to get closer and closer and closer to zero, or the x-axis. So, let's look at this example. Consider this function. Once again, x does not equal 1. We can see that x can't equal 1 because of this right here. If you put a 1 in the denominator, 0 again. Are you guys seeing a theme about where the holes are? It's where you can't divide by 0. Sketch it up. Um, you could sketch this with your prior knowledge, or you could grab a calculator at this point. No shame in that game. Um, there is a horizontal or a vertical asymptote uh, where x is equal to 1, because that's where it makes it, the graph freak out because you can't divide by zero. So I'm going to do, this is x is equal to one. I realize I did two squares here, but I'm labeling it as x is equal to one. The horizontal asymptote is a little more nuanced. Uh, if you ever have a linear function divided by a linear function, um, the horizontal asymptote is the ratio of the coefficients of the leading coefficients. So then since there's a one here in front of this x, that means that 2 divided by 1 is 2, and then y is equal to 2 is our horizontal asymptote. And then the cobwebs are in the lower left. Oops. That's pretty good. And in the upper right. Nope. <laughs> Silly program. Now, it says state the equations of any asymptotes. Well, I, I just s sort of stated them right here, that they're uh, y equals 2 and x equals 1. But I kind of want to get you guys familiar with the limit notation, which would be um, as, oops, not x, as x approaches infinity f of x goes to um, positive 2. So what that means is, as x gets really, really big, so as you travel really far this direction, what's happening to the graph here is as you go really far out this way, notice that this cobweb is getting closer and closer and closer to the line y equals 2. So if I went out to like a million or a billion or something like that, it would be something really, really close to 2, but not quite 2. That's the spirit of an asymptote. <coughs> now, as x approaches negative infinity, that means what's happening as we're going this direction. So as, as I go really far out on this side, the graph is going to get closer and closer and closer to positive 2, but from like the underside. So we can just say that f of x also equals 2 when that happens. Um, another way to say that with limits is that the limit as x goes to positive or negative infinity, plus or minus infinity, that f of x is equal to 2. Now, that's the horizontal asymptote. Uh, the vertical... So here, I'll label that. This is the horizontal. And the vertical. Notice that our vertical asymptote is right here. It's at x equals 1. It's when you try to divide by 0. That's when the graph freaks out. Um, with limit notation, that would be as x approaches 1 from the positive side, then f of x goes to positive infinity. So here's what I mean by that. Um, as you get really, really close to 1, so here's 1, and as I get very close going this way towards that line, that this line goes all the way up to positive infinity. Now notice if I do the opposite, like if I go really, really close to 1 from this side, that the graph goes deeper and deeper and deeper towards negative infinity. So we'll say as x approaches 1 to negative infinity, then f of x, or sorry, uh, as x approaches 1 from the left hand, or the right hand, no, left hand side, jeez, get it together, Jolly. 
the graph goes down to negative infinity. So, to summate, the horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. We found that out up here. And then the vertical asymptote is here. So uh, x is equal to 1. All right, you guys, your homework tonight is section 5A and 5B. Good luck.